Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to show you my part of the collaboration I did with Bentley House Minis. It's a pretty long video, but that's because there's a lot of pieces involved. However, you won't be disappointed. And if you wait until the end, you can see what Aira made for me. As well as, you can click the link below in the description to see what she did in her tutorial. Check it out. Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be working on a control center and with the control center it's going to have some screens and you will see here and here this is the parts of the screens then you have your thin boards then you have your top and in this top there's little slits cut out in it. Now that's going to be for your little arms to go up and down to control your screens if you want to do it that way because this is going to be kind of like for a spaceship type thing. So I imagine it would be sort of like that. I don't really know, but that's what I think. These two pieces here are going to be for the side panels. So one thing you can do is you can leave your desktop flat, or you can find some maps online, or you can go ahead and use some scrapbook paper as your maps to kind of say where you're going. Or maybe you just want to color or paint something on there. I don't know. But in the meantime, this is what we have. The very first thing that we need to do is we need to flip this over and then we need to glue in the side here. Now for me, I am really big on crazy glue with Loctite because it lasts like for a quick hold and then this here tight bond glue actually ends up taking and leaving you with a long hold. So I'm just going to do a teeny bit, oh, that came out fast on there. Okay, so I am not liking how fast that came out and I'm worried that it's going to bleed into my project. So I'm just going to take a little bit of cardstock from this envelope that I have and I'm just going to blend it in a little bit better. Okay, so now I'm going to take and put this piece is going to go here, and we're going to just slide it right in there. It's going to be a nice snug fit. You want to make sure that it's a snug fit. Take this Q-tip, and I'm going to pull out any of that excess. And the same way with the back. I actually have a tool that does this a little bit easier, so I'm going to go ahead and get that before I do the next one. All right, so I went ahead and got my tool, so it's a little bit easier. And it pulls off all that excess glue. And if you need to round the corners to make a nice rounded point, then you would use this side because it has that little gap. I don't know if you can see that gap on camera or not, but the gap in the corner will just round the glue and give you a bead of glue there. All right, now the next step is to glue this piece here. And the one good thing about this is they're acrylic. So if you order the helper tools and you go with this one, it's washable. So you can just wash it off. But however, I will say Crazy Glue will not wash off of that because it's acrylic. I don't know that Crazy Glue washes off anything, to be honest. So I'm going to take my tool here and I'm just going to 
pull off that excess glue that I don't need. And then I'm gonna use my helper tool to make sure it dries square. With the Loctite, it should only take a minute for it to start setting up. All right, now that we have that done, we need to put these on here, but we don't want to glue this front piece on just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this in here and then slide that back. Now, you have the option when you're doing this, there's a couple ways that you can do it. This piece here that you have, you can actually put this to where it's on top and gives you a finished look at the top like that or if you want to put lights inside here then you could take that piece there and you can put this here like this and then leave yourself just enough space for the back screen to sandwich with that in between it which is very hard to do by the way with it not being glued and then that would be like that and then the the cord can drop down below the bottom so how I'm going to do it and I'm just going to glue the back piece on for now and I'm going to glue it with this here being all the way at the top edge and then this being at the top edge and then it's going to touch the very very back here like that in the same way up here this is all going to touch and then you'll glue that in place and then I'll take this one and I'll glue this here the screen piece I'll wait on because I do want to put some lights in here and I have to cut the acrylic piece for that so I'm going to wait on doing that piece All right, so now you're just going to put a little bit of glue along here and a little bit along here. If you have the glue tool, then you can just spread it out without using your finger. Kind of reminds you of a little spatula that you would use in the kitchen, just a whole lot smaller. And then I'm just going to put it on here. Of course, I forgot to put the Loctite on there, so I get my quick hold. Now, if this piece is not perfect when you put it on it's okay because it's in the back and you're never going to see it if you notice there's a gap between here and here I did that intentionally because when this is here if you want to put lights in there you need somewhere for your wires to drop down out so you can plug it in now I'm just going to lay it flat like that and I'm going to push that on there and for this one, I'm not worried about the glue in there because I'm not going to see it. So I'm not going to even fight with that at all. Check to see if we're still square. And we are. And this is the helper tool. So if you want to do that, then that's on my shop. Alright, so I'm going to just go and do a little bit of super glue down there. A tiny bit of regular glue. She'll need a lot for this piece. 
and just spread out that thicker glue. And we're gonna just fit this right in here. And you wanna make it even with the top edge of the other one. If you're, oh, I just glued myself to the project. You might not wanna do that. So for this, I'm gonna push it up like this and then I'm just gonna hold it down. And then I'm gonna show you how to make that round bead glue mark as soon as it sets up. Because this piece, I want to have a little bit more glue on it because it just is so thin. All right, so now I'm gonna do just a tiny bit of glue and you see how that is like that. Now I could always do this with my finger, but my finger might not get in there. See how I'm dragging it and it's not really doing nothing there. But with my glue tool at that rounded end, I can get completely in there. And it leaves that nice rounded bead mark where the glue is. I'm gonna put a little bit more glue down here so it has something to grab. And a little bit there. Now, this is going to be kind of thick, so it will take a little bit to dry. And if you want to continue that down along that edge, you certainly can do that with your leftovers. Now remember, you're taking up real estate in here with this glue. So if you wanna put another piece of screen or anything in here, then you're gonna have to remember this is gonna take up some of that space that you're putting that in. So now I want to get up this excess glue along this whole edge. So I'm just going to go just like that, come into that corner, and then I've got a nice clean bead of glue. And do the same thing to this back side. And then there you have it, a nice clean bead. Now we're going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to go to the right a little bit to get it covered on that edge. And we're going to come back. Not a lot of glue on this one that's in that corner or that crevice, so I have to add a little bit more. then we'll just take it off the excess. And the acrylic ones, you can wash. The MDF ones, you cannot. So the MDF helper tools are this, so you can't obviously wet that. Okay, so I'm just using a wipe, and I'm just cleaning that off. All right, so now that's setting up. I bought some paper for the desktop. So I can go ahead and measure and cut that if I want where it is that I wanna go. And how I would do that is I would just line up there and then cut it down. And I would actually prefer to use the paper cutter rather than scissors, because I'm not a very straight cutting person. Okay, so now I've got a piece of that big scrapbook paper cut and I'm going to glue it on here. And how I'm going to do that is by using some Mod Podge. Alright, so I'm using the mat 
for this project. And you don't need a whole lot of this. Primarily want to get them edges covered. Make sure you have no bubbles in your Mod Podge. And then you want to take your map, whichever way you're going to put it in here, line it up with the front and back, adjust it like so. If the back is not quite at the edge, remember you're going to put your other screen there, so that's okay. Now what I'm going to do, and you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm going to take a thin layer of this Mod Podge and I'm going to go over top of my paper. That way it has a little bit of a protective coating. And your Mod Podge might start bubbling. Most of that should dry if you don't put too much excessiveness on there. Once um, everything's dry, it should settle down. But make sure you just do a thin layer. Like I'm pulling it out of where it is. Right, and then that's going to dry. Okay, so while that's drying, I'm going to take this paint, and this is just bare. It's a paint sample. You can go to Home Depot and you can have them mix you up some. And it lasts forever when you're doing miniatures. As you can see, I haven't used mine in a while. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and after I've shaken it up, I'm gonna paint the other half over here. All right, so that side is finished with the first layer. And then you wanna go ahead and take some paint and start painting everything else except for the inside of here. When you get to the part where the little holes are, you want to just go lightly over that so that your paint doesn't end up in the holes so much. You can even dry brush it is probably the better way to do it. starting to shape up with a little bit of paint on it. Now this is just the first layer of paint. All right, so here's what I've gotten done so far with painting it. Now that's got to set up and dry a little bit before we can do the next part. But the next part is right here. So if you want, before you glue this on, as long as you don't get anything on the edges, then you can go ahead and paint it. Okay, so I went ahead and got some coffee stir and sticks that I had here, and I decided that I'm going to frame in my mat so it looks more like a screen. The coffee stir and sticks won't come with the kit, but you can always um, ask your local coffee shop if you could have a couple, or you can order them online. They're like a whole bunch of them for real cheap. Amazon has them.
as well. All right, so this is a bigger one. And then that's what that one would look like in there. I personally think this is too big for this section. Maybe if I had a little button here, that would be good. But I left this spot vacant. So if you want to put a keyboard or something there, you could. But again, if you glue this up here, then they won't move, but then you'll have it. And then you can also, which I'm not gonna push it on here with my fingers down there, I'll have to get a pair of pliers. But you can also take and um, shorten them and not have them so high, which is what I'll end up doing, because I just don't think that's quite the size I want it to be. I'll probably have it more like that because that looks more realistic and then I'll snip them off so for now though I'm just going to take them out of there because I'm not ready for that part just yet I'm gonna put my little foam blocks in here so I have them and uh, I'll use some crazy glue to glue it to that foam but this is what it's going to look like so far and of course this is not glued in yet because I still want to do the screens behind it. Now I do have printable screens on my website that you can download and then you can just print that out and put it behind it already. They're the size so you just would print it that way. This is not really anything you need to worry about however this here is going to slide up underneath it there if you're not going to do what the screens kind of hard to get it in there because it's painted but then it'll be like that and then your screens will be there or if you want to do something with the light and you don't want that there then your other option is you can paint it and then just glue it butt it up right up next to that and then just drop your wires down right out of the back of this here area it's completely up to you with that section because that's not done yet. Now this is dry, so what I can do now is I can actually glue this in place. This piece here, let me turn it over, is gonna get glued right there. And that's just to give the desk a little bit more of a finished look. So we're just gonna put a teeny dab of crazy glue and a little bit here, a little bit there. I'm gonna kind of dab that off because it's got like too, too much. Way more than I want. Maybe I'll figure out how to open a glue bottle before I get too old. Now I'm just gonna put that in there. Very gently put that in that one without gluing myself to it. I'm gonna raise it right up next to the front edge as much as I can, make it even. Now, one thing I do want to say, if you want to use this as a desk for your dollhouse, say like it's just so you don't want it as a computer screen or a computer control center, you can still use this particular model as that by not putting these screens on here and just use the backboard as the front board and then just not use these two pieces. And then you would have a nice big desk for your space. Now the height is pretty, I mean you can kind of compare it to the bear bottle. So it's like made for 112th scale dolls. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up what I'm doing here and then I will show you the next step in a minute. Okay, so now what I've done is I've just rough fit this in here but you can glue yours in like that. But again, if you get paint on the side, you're gonna to have to watch it because of this area here. It'll be a little harder to get in and out. 
and you might have to touch up your paint if not. So like right there, when I went to put it in, I actually nicked it a little bit, so I'll have to touch that little area up. My coffee stirring sticks were just regular coffee stirs, and I cut some of these so that it's gonna go right up in here, and then right on top of here. And that did slightly move a little bit, but that's okay. I can adjust that when I actually go to glue it in. But I wanna put some stuff behind here yet, so I'm not gonna glue mine in. So once I get that all situated, then that'll be like how that'll glue in there. But in the meantime, I did want to show you this. So if you want to just glue some little handles in place, like stationary on there, which I can't even show you because they're so tiny. But if you just want to glue them in there like that and paint them, you can. Or... You can kind of cheat a little bit. You can grab yourself some stick pens that have the teeny tiny heads. I mean, these are like maybe a 16th thick and some little foam blocks and then there you go. You would just be careful not to stick yourself. You would just take this and I'm gonna do two for one. Okay, and then I can glue that in place and then snip off where I don't want it to be. So maybe that one's teal, so maybe the next one I'll do yellow or something. Again, be careful not to get yourself. Now you can glue that block underneath so that it doesn't sink down like that, or you can just have your knobs low like that and just pretend that they're going to be little tiny ones that's just gonna slide up and down and if you want to get the bigger ones I'll show you what that looks like all right guys so now that we have that taken care of let's do the little shifting things here I decided not to use these because I just think they're a little thick and I don't feel like really honestly gluing them all together so I went ahead and I took this piece of foam that I had from that and I cut it down and that's what I'm gonna glue on there so just one is what I'm gonna glue. It's not perfectly straight, but it'll work. I'm just gonna take it and just glue it in place with some Loctite super glue. See if I can avoid gluing my hand together. I'm gonna put it on there just like that. And so that it stays in place, I'm going to use this to hold it on there momentarily. All right, now I've got my stick pens. That's what I've decided to use for my little boards. And I'm gonna press them in there, just like so. Don't get your fingers in the back, because that might hurt. Pick whatever colors you're gonna use. And I'm going with the tiny stick pens. I don't want the big ones. Actually, I'm gonna put this blue one over here. Remember, keep your fingers out of the way. Because trust me, getting stuck with a stick pen is no picnic in the park. Now again, you could probably use wood if you wanted to and you wanted to make those go up and down and you could put like a little piece of wood underneath of it like this and just glue it and then have it go back and forth and just draw a hole in it to hold it in place. If you wanted to do that, that would work as well. But um, since dolls don't move, I'm not going to do that. I 
and you can put them in different positions. So like if you want to put one down here, you can. If you want to put one where it's up here, you can. And then kind of go in different areas where it looks like they're moving. You can do that. And you can make them as low or as high as you want. I honestly think I like them a little bit lower than the ones on the right, so I think I'm going to go a tiny bit lower. And some of that glue is sticking already because the, the things are going through it. Alright, so then you got your different knobs. I'm missing one right here. How did I skip that? I guess since we don't have pink, we'll just do pink. And you can paint these too. You don't have to keep them colored if you don't want to. Alright, now, once you've done that, then you want to remove your tape very carefully not to pull your stick pens out. Just like that. Save your tape because you might need it. All right, so double check, see if they're in the position you want them in. Now, before you do anything else, you want to add some crazy glue or hot glue. Hot glue will be good to keep it from having edges if you don't want the edges so just let that dry and I know that's like an excessive amount of hot glue there I mean crazy glue but that's okay all right so there's that and since I do have this tape here I'm gonna cut a piece of it and I'm actually gonna put it right on the edge of that that way I'm actually protecting that wire a little bit more so it's not exposed. All right, you wanna let that dry. And then the next part, you're gonna just snip off the edges. And then um, if you wanna glue another piece of foam on top of it, you can to keep it from sticking you if you wanna grab it or whatever. Or you can just put some hot glue on it and call it a day. desk chair all right so the kit will come with a bunch of little parts and in this kit you will have two pieces that look like this one's gonna be the front and one's gonna be the back and then you're gonna have the chair seat and then you're gonna have the pieces for the chair legs to attach to set this up here you have two sets of chair arms that way you can decide which one you want to use there's going to be some extra wheels in here just because um, a lot of times they fall through the laser like the little honeycomb tray so I always print extra and if they don't fall through then I just send them in the kit okay. so if this didn't already pop out when it was cutting then you just kind of pop that out really easy like that um, these are going to be the leg pieces. The only thing you're going to need is some glue, some cardboard, and however you're going to decorate this with paint or whatever. All right. So the very first thing that you need to do is you need to glue these two pieces together. Okay. And the other thing, you will need some stick pins. I forgot about those. Unless you just want to glue it together without having the wheels actually move. you can use wood glue for this but I'm impatient and I'm trying to do a quick video so I use Loctite super glue it works really good but once it sticks it sticks so you have no play time all right the next thing you need to do is take this piece and you're gonna glue it into one of these pieces and it's gonna be even at the bottom here so what I do is I take a little bit of glue
and I just put it around that little edge going around in a circle. And then I take it and to make sure that it's flush with the bottom. I just set it on something flat and then I push it down in there. Now make sure you don't glue it to whatever surface you're using. But that's how I make sure it's flat. All right, the next step is you're going to take and put a little bit of glue on each piece of this. And then you're going to glue this right in the center of each one of these. And these are going to be your feet for your chair. All right, repeat that process throughout the rest of the feet. When you get done, you should have something that looks like this. All right, so the next part is this has to get glued to here, like this, if I can get it in there. Let me turn it upside down so I can see what I'm doing, so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so this has to get glued here, but you also have to take the second one of these and put it in here as well. So the easiest way to do that is to slide this on and then put a little bit of glue on each piece of the little wings that are hanging out there. Then take this one and I have to turn it upside down because I can't see. And put that one there. So you want this flush. So you're going to turn it upside down like we did before. And then you're going to take that piece that you have here and you're going to press that down and let it glue to that. Make sure that is flat. And that is flat. Alright, so once it's glued, then you want to take and put some glue around here. And then your second part of your seat, you're going to make even with the front and even with the sides. Just like that. If it's not perfectly even, just sand it and you won't see. But there's what we have there so far. All right. The next step is you're going to be gluing this piece to this piece and then this piece to that piece. So glue these two together. Make sure they're even with one another the same way we just did with the seat. Now, this piece gets glued on here like this, but with this piece, you have that that attaches down there. If you want to use like a duct tape hinge or something, or a regular hinge, before you glue this on, you would attach that hinge right here in this section. And then that would give you a recline to this chair. And if you recline this chair just a little bit, that's when you would use the side arms like this, as opposed to the side arms that look like this. All right, so now that's your option. I am going to put this piece here, and I'm going to take this piece that we just glued together 
Oh, and you got to put some glue across the bottom of here, sorry. And I'm going to just glue those two together like that. Now, if you want to sand this and kind of round it out around the edges, do it gently before you add the arms. But you would um, need to use like a Dremel or like a sanding block or something like that to do it. All right, so now I'm gonna take this piece here, which is the arm. I'm gonna put a little bit on the bottom there going to put it in the hole and put it right at the far edge as far as I can get it over on there. Now that's going to support the back to the front holding that all together because you have very little pieces here that you're working with. So you just do that. All right, and I got a little too much glue on there so I'm just going to pull that out of there. That way it doesn't dry with a bubble there. All right, and then there is your desk chair that's not reclined. Like I said, if you want to put these handles on here for the um, other kind, you can. And if you also just want to glue them on there, you know, just for, you know, decorative purposes, you can do that too. I put them in the kit. You can do it either way. I'm doing it this way because I think that way just is better for me. All right, so now the stick pens, if you're going to use this method, and your wheels. Like I said, you have extra wheels because the wheels need to be thinner than what the wood is actually cut with. I take a small razor blade and I go down the middle and I hold it with pliers and I split them in half very easy to do you just have to keep your fingers out of the way but I want mine elevated a little bit so I use stick pens and I'm going to put one stick pen in here then each one of these little feet have a hole so then I'm gonna take the other stick pen that I have and I'm gonna put it there now at this point the wheels will spin if you leave it like that and then you glue this end. But I am going to put some crazy glue on here and also on here. Of course, I just moved that. And um, I'm just going to glue mine in place just like that. And then by using this stick pen, it keeps my wheels completely in line and each one of them will be even. So I don't have to worry about it being different sizes and making my chair all wonky when it sits. So again, I'm gonna put it in that hole. And when you're doing this, if you're using stick pens, make sure you're careful not to stick yourself. Because trust me, it doesn't feel pleasant to get stuck with a stick pen. So I'm going to put a little bit there and a little bit there. Push those two together and then the wheels will set. At this point, you can leave that in there until it dries for sure. If you can get your stick pin back out, that's fine. If not, you just clip them off at the edge. I typically clip mine off at the edge. And as I said before, stick pens can be tricky and they can uh, stick you very easily. So, like, just be really careful. And if you're like me, you'll drop one or two and you'll step on it later. All right, I'm going to do that to the other ones and I'll be right back. I'm going to hold this away from the point so I don't get my finger. 
and I'm going to snip that off and then do the same thing to all the others. And I would recommend that you put a dab of hot glue on there to cover that point. But if you don't have hot glue, then just um, sand it down a little bit and it'll be fine. All right, so now I'm going to go back where I just did. And on the side where we cut, I'm going to put a little dab of the crazy glue to make sure that that one doesn't fall back through. If you're doing hot glue, that's fine. But I'm going to do a little dab of crazy glue. And when I'm doing it, I try to keep all of my pens facing the opposite way that I'm working so that I don't end up getting myself stuck. Because trust me, I've definitely been stuck. Alright, so there's what the desk chair looks like. So, if you don't like this part here, where it's got the little square thing in there, that's fine. Get yourself some cardboard, and I'm just using an envelope from a mailer, and then you're going to cut it to fit. This one is not quite there, so I have to cut it a little bit thinner. You just take the cardboard, and I always take and put it on one of these flat surfaces first. And what I do is I take my pliers or something that bends this make it straight first and I take it and I try to get a little thin edge and just put a crease in it to where it will bend over just like that and then you have like a little lip there and then I glue that lip on that little edge there and then I wrap this around going completely underneath of each one of these little things here. All right, and it's a lot easier to do once you get that first piece on there dried. So I'm using a little bit of this glue again. I'm gonna go in there, and so that I don't get my fingers glued to this, I'm just gonna kinda hold that in place with that. All right, now I want to go through each piece underneath, and you can bend it if you want, which might actually be easier to just kind of bend it under there like that for you. And then make sure you're pulling it snug. Keep going. And you can do this as many times as you feel that you need. Usually I only wrap it twice, but it wasn't stopping where I wanted it to, so I went one more. just going to go ahead and take that and pull it around like that. And I use the pliers because otherwise this gets on your fingers and it makes your fingers really hard. let that dry. If you don't like that there's a little seam there, just take some very, very fine sandpaper and then sand it. But it's at the back of the chair, so I mean, it's fine by me. By the time I put paint on it and everything, you won't really see it. But there is your desk chair. And it will look very good next to your desk.
Okay, so the next step is to decide if you want to sand this down. And if you do, then you can do that and then paint it. My wheels are already dried, but they are still a little sharp because, like I said, you want to put some um, crazy glue on there. So you just go around this edge just like this if you're going to be sanding it with sandpaper by hand to smooth out that edge to the desired, you know, thing you want to do. So, like, this is one that I was working on in the beginning. It was a prototype, and that's what it would look like when it's painted black. I didn't really like that one, so I modified it a few. This one I sanded it down, and after I painted it and was messing with it, um, it needs to be painted again. But you can see how it gets thinner around the edges and stuff. And um, I just used the Dremel to do that. So if you're going to sand it, just turn your Dremel on if you have it or use sandpaper. And then you would just go around those edges just like that. And you would just sand it down to the area that you want it to be done. Um, just to let you know about that. But anyway, I'm going to sand this a little bit more and then I'm going to paint it and I will be right back. All right, so... One more thing, before I paint it, I did want to tell you that um, these are armrests. So if you want to put armrests on there, then you would just glue them right here in this spot. And then you have armrests. Okay guys, so here is Aver's part of our collaboration. I'm gonna go ahead and untape it so that our addresses aren't seen, but um, I can't wait to open this. I'm super excited. She's gonna close a little, thank you. All right, so it says film projector, Oh. Oh my gosh, you know what? This is going to be great, Era. I actually have a movie theater that I'm in the middle of doing. So this is going to be perfect for that. And, you know, I was actually going <laughs> to go on your shop and buy this from you. So thank you so much. This is going to be awesome. I can't wait to do this. So let's see what else we have. Oh, we're going to go with this one first. I think this is the Look at that. Oh my gosh. Era, this turned out so good. You guys, she works so hard. And, and for those of you who have not followed me, um, this is actually the Beacon Hill that my father and I did together. It's gorgeous. I absolutely love it. And the painting that she did is great too. This is going to be great. Alright, so here it is. This is the big reveal. I'm actually getting teary eyed. I'm close my eyes. Alright, I'm going to open them. Oh my gosh. He turned out so good. So. I sent Aira a picture of my dad. Actually, I sent her several pictures, but primarily my dad always wore flannels, and literally she matched the shirt almost exactly the way his shirt was, and he was always in blue jeans. So this is such a great fit, and oh my goodness, look, she's even got shoes on him. I didn't even realize that. You guys, you have to go see how she made him on her channel because I'm telling you, this is phenomenal. It turned out way better than I actually thought. 
you know, even down to the hair. I mean, like, you guys who know my dad and have seen him in videos and stuff, you totally and completely um, know this looks like him. He had the big forehead with a little bit of wrinkles, and I don't know if you can see the wrinkles on camera or not. But that's perfect. This is so good. It's actually choking me up, you guys. Ah, oh, I'm so impressed. Anyway, this collaboration was one of the best that I think I could have ever done. This is perfect, Aerol. Thank you so much for making him. And uh, I'll put the link below so you can see how she did him and how she did the chair and everything. And you have to go over to her channel because she's simply amazing. She's such a great person, and she has a wonderful channel. So I'm going to let you go for now and leave a question, suggestion, or comment below. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this collaboration between us. And uh, subscribe and hit the bell to see more. Thanks so much.